On Jedi Council today, we're going to break down the Han Solo trailer. There's a bunch of new comics, and Lumparooski, or Lumpasock Sock, has a new, he's canon. And we're going to talk about it right now. Welcome back to Collider Jedi Council. I'm Christian Harloff, a.k.a. Darth Harloff Minor, and it is our Star Wars show, and obviously this is brand new. And the first thing I got to look at all these graphics. If you've watched Movie Talk, then you know about the new graphics, obviously, that we've had in play. And now Jedi Council has the graphics package, and I would also give a big shout-out to the graphics master himself, Brian Ward. He is an absolute genius. He does a lot of the schmodown art. He did all the graphics for Collider Movie Talk, and now he implemented these here, too. And, and to the production team who's working their asses off to make sure that you guys get the new package. One other thing little housekeeping before we introduce the panel today subscriptions on youtube i know that a lot of times people go oh, i didn't even know the new jedi council episode it dropped a lot of people aren't aware of this still it is crucial for you guys to click on that notifications bell on youtube in order for you to get the episode because if you don't it's just some kind of an algorithm. You may know, you may not know when the episode's up. So make sure you click the bell, and that way you will be notified every time a Jedi Council episode goes up. Okay, none more of that. It's time to talk to the Council. First, he's back off his hiatus in uh, Naboo last week, Mr. Kylo Ken, Ken Knapsack. Uh, to get a lot of views on YouTube, we should call this a Star Wars ASMR video. Uh, <laughs> I'll cut your hair in the uh, style of a Star Wars character. You've been watching a lot of those, yeah. I see? Uh, that's how I get to sleep. All right, good for you. Uh, next Next to me, she's making her triumphant return. Well, you've seen her on the commentary. She's been on Jedi before. She comes back. It's Rosie, the Jedi Knight. Hey. Hello, Rosie. Hey. hey. How, How are you? Guys nice to see you That's again. like the best setup for a name. She, there I was know. no option. You don't have to do anything. <laughs> Jedi Knight. Yeah. That Van William with the Vandalorian, Rosie Knight, the Jedi Knight. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Have you guys not been on the show? Do you think you've been on the show? Yeah, yeah. well, on, on our first, first time. On yeah, the first yeah, time. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. We go way back. Way back. Way back, way back when. To, All right. Well, we've got a lot to talk about today, so let's just get right into it. The first thing we're going to talk about, c 3 Pro is going to let us know that it is time for Star Wars Movie News. That's right. Thank you, c 3 Pro. Star Wars movie news it is time to talk about the latest and greatest in the world of movie news ken what do you got well first of all i want to suggest that we rename that droid because i don't think i don't accept that as c-3po i think yeah, we should it doesn't look like c-3po i right. think we should have a fan contest to name the droid i love that idea that's what should go all right on. that's true that's not cody C3PO. whip up that graphic right now <laughs> <laughs> right, so go ahead and do that that's that's a great that's a great idea right away What's the droid's name? Make sure that you guys comment. That's the comment we're going to go through, and we'll check it out. Great suggestion that I came up with. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> I'm kidding. Ken, good idea. All right. Hey, let's, uh, let's uh, you know, WrestleMania was this weekend. It WrestleMania was. 34. Yeah. You and I, that's a holiday. It's a holiday for you too, Rosie? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Know. Any yeah. holiday. Yeah, any, any holiday is good. <laughs> yeah. uh, I just don't want to assume that people don't have right. WrestleMania holiday parties like I do. Mm -hmm. um, but in the middle of that, Christian Harloff, was the release of the first, technically first full trailer for full trail, yeah. so Solo, A Star Wars Story. This is our chance to kind of dig in as a panel. So let's dig in. Let's a lot of stuff it. to see, choose from, posters, a lot of, lot of cool stuff. Yeah, a lot of cool stuff for sure. And I was watching, speaking of WrestleMania, I'm in the middle of watching it because we did our podcast like the next day. And I got so many tweets, obviously. What, what do you think? What do you think about the Soul Trailer? What, what, what are your thoughts? And I'm like, I haven't watched it yet. And it's just like, I must have told them that I stole their dog. And they're like, what? And I'm like, I'm going to watch it because we're going to talk about it all this week, I promise. And I did. And I watched it a couple of times. I talked about a movie talk. But um, I really enjoyed this trailer way more than I did the two teasers that come out because, like I said, I'm not trying to find a replacement for Harrison Ford. I'm not trying to find a replacement anymore. I'm trying to, uh, I'm still trying to look for. Well, the essence of Han mm -hmm. Solo, and you're really still not going to get that in a trailer. You're really not going to get it until you watch the whole... You may or may not get that, but you really can't fairly assess it until you watch the whole film. So I'm not going to judge him or the whole movie on what I'm feeling about him yet, but I think that the movie itself looks like a very cool Western. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it opens up with that Western feel, and the imagery and the stuff and the little Easter eggs that are just in this trailer alone, way more than a lot of the other things. This is the Star Wars adventure we've been looking for yeah. for a little bit, the way that it's all set up, and I think that this is going to be Chewbacca's story mm -hmm. more than anything else. It really feels like there's a lot. It looks like we see Kashyyyk in there. You see his wife. The reason I, uh, the tease up top is that Lumpy from the Star Wars Christmas special that is almost like Voldemort. We don't like to say the name. Um, <laughs> it's uh, the character, uh, the son, is canon. Chuck Wendig made the, made it canon in the in the third Aftermath book, um, and 
so that makes a lot more sense when you see a lot of the imagery here in the trailer with who I believe might be his wife. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's gonna, we're going to learn a lot more about Chewie, and we learn more about the relationship of how Han and Chewie hit it off right away. I mean, they have those little back and forth. It didn't bother me that it didn't feel just like Harrison Ford or Han Solo. I was like, okay, I might like this new dynamic of it. It's a different version of Han, the same way Daniel Craig is a different version of, yeah. of Sean Connery. So I was cool with it, but there's a lot to talk about. Rosie, what are some of your thoughts about this trailer? I really liked it. Yeah. Uh, last time I was here, we were talking about like trying to be cautiously optimistic, but I wasn't necessarily really excited. But I actually think this trailer was pretty incredible. I think they do a really, really good job at Lucasfilm of making fantastic trailers that can really give you a feel for kind of what they're going for. I love the setting, the kind of snow. It's very visually different. A lot of the interesting stuff, the double-sided train, yep. you know, that kind of, and yeah, you know, seeing Chewie get so much attention, him uh, hugging who might be Marla, you know, and uh, yeah, I thought it was, I thought it was really exciting. I thought it gave a much better feel for what they're trying to do with the movie. The other, the teasers were very, um, like minimal yeah. and I felt like I didn't really it, it's a Han Solo movie cool whereas like you said this is like oh this is going to be a western you know there's definitely influences in there from like classic like Sergio Leone stuff yep. or, or old Kurosawa stuff you know and uh, I think that's really cool that they kind of went big for this first reveal and I and I think it's exciting to see them kind of you know there was the kind of throwaway moment where he's like what you're 200 right. to Chewy, which maybe shows us where it's set as well, because I think around the Battle of Yavin, Chewie's meant to be about 190. So, yeah. I mean, um, 200, flip, and it's flip, the flip, other flip, way yeah, around. Flip, yeah. 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 So he's like, oh, you're almost 200 years old, and then, yeah. Yeah, which, which made sense. So you look at all these things that, it, they, even that little moment when they're, it looks like the Sabaki that we're going mm -hmm. to get when they walk in, and all that stuff. I'm the only thing I'm not necessarily worried about, but I'm curious how they're going to handle it. I don't want to see a ripoff K2SO here. No. Because that's what I, I got a mixture of a ripoff KTOSO mixed with Paulie's robot from Rocky IV <laughs> um, with the Lando thing. So I just want to make sure that this droid is a very, because that's what makes these droids so great is the different personalities they all have. I don't want to see the same type of thing that I saw. I already saw that in Rogue One. But what I did seem to see here is, you know, back when that statement that everybody lost their minds with, with um, when Bob Iger said, we're gonna learn how Han Solo got his name. And everyone's like, what, his name's not Han Solo? It's yeah. Clearly from this trailer, what we get is him joining the crew, that this is what he wants. And Woody Harrelson telling him a couple different things that we, that we know as Han Solo fans is that don't trust everybody because mm -hmm. someone's gonna betray you. And I don't know if that's just a reference to Empire Strikes Back or if it's a reference to one of these new people that are gonna do it. Um, but it also shows the mentality of him. So what did you think about the trailer overall, Ken? I absolutely love this trailer in like a B plus type of manner. What I mm -hmm. mean by that is it did its job. It set the tone. I got more of the story, but I don't know exactly where the movie's going to be. Like, I don't know if that train heist is third act. I don't know if it's first act right. <laughs> because Tobias Beckett's on there and I don't expect him to live long, you know, but that's how mm -hmm. your brain starts speculating irresponsibly about some of this kind of stuff in right. a fun way. That's part of the fun here. Uh, it looks like we got some action on Mimbon or Kessel. That might be where Chewie comes into play and maybe Han, maybe we do see Han on rescue Chewy. I wasn't sure, still not sure if that's going to happen. I think they're going to do that. Yeah, I think. Yeah. I think that. Yeah, yeah, and I, life that might we say the birth of it, and I think maybe you know Han's a mud trooper at some point or something like that. You're seeing him in some of that costume. So, so it did that stuff. It did that job. Yeah. As far as the big questions, which are are fair questions to ask. I've, I've never felt you're, you're harsh on it there. I think oh. I was on board for Alden more earlier than other people, just because I think the character. Uh, the character choices, uh, not, the character moments in the first teaser trailers are there for me. Mm -hmm. In the confident Han, not so confident. We'll get out of this. I hope we get out of this. But this one took that that and expanded on it with Kasdan and his son's writing yeah. uh, to it's a hopeful. I, it's it's so on the nose that I love it. Mm -hmm. it it's like Liam Gallagher uh, being described as so punk. Uh, he's not punk. He's punk again type right. of circle of life here uh, with the with the I've got a good feeling about this that is Han <laughs> in this movie right. he's 25 when I was 25 I had a lot better feelings about things than I, than I was <laughs> jaded and we, find, we, find, yeah. we kind of find out why it's the same reason here's a per this is a perfect example actually I think because when the Falcon came out and you saw this design and I have friends that were like that's not the Falcon it looks nothing like the Falcon I'm like this is years before. Yeah. The thing's gonna get smashed up to pieces yeah. um, and it's not gonna look the same. The same goes with Han. Yeah. Han yeah. The, the Han uh, in that, this hopeful Han will start to get grizzled away and I think 
actually two predictions that I think I'm going to make here. The first is when Chewie is saying goodbye to Mala, as we will find out it is, um, that's because he's got to fulfill the life debt to Han for saving. I think something yeah. happens on Kashyyyk because, and we also see the Star Destroyers being built in the one mm -hmm. in the opening mm -hmm. shot too. Like mm -hmm. he's part of the Empire. I think that that stuff, that all that stuff is happening. One of the reasons he leaves is because of the enslavement of the Wookiees or whatever's happening. He frees Chewbacca. Chewbacca then says to his wife, "I got this life debt." She's like, "Yeah, you got the life debt. Go <laughs> and and goodbye. Here's a, here's a kiss." The other thing, I hope she quotes Boss Ness. <laughs> you should be having the life pay <laughs> with this Karelian smuggler. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that's one, but the other thing is, uh, I also think Beckett will be the one who betrays Han. I think that he pretty much tells yeah. him up top, um, "Don't trust everybody. What I tell you, kid, don't trust everybody." Walter Donovan in Last Crusade. Yeah. Yeah, and also yeah. as well, DJ in Last Jedi does yeah. the. It's both yes. sides, you know. Like, mm -hmm. I think it's very likely that that will be the way. I think it. That sadly probably also means that Kiara will die. Uh, Kira. Yeah. That's, yeah. That, yeah. I think if she yeah. doesn't betray him, she has to die for them to yeah. be able to put that emotional kind of resonance on right. that right. role and have him, why does he never talk about her? Why don't we Do ever you, see her why, ever again? Yeah, why yeah. have we never heard right. about her? You right. know? Yeah. Unless they had a really bad breakup and, you know, she, I don't know, something <laughs> with Lando or something. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, there was a lot. There's a lot in there. What did you see? Because you're usually your eyes usually scour these things. We see the the destroyer. There's there's a lot of kind of characters in the background. There was a character apparently from Rogue One in there. There's a there's a bounty hunter that was in Rogue One. I, oh, is it the bounty hunter or is it? That's good. I'll, I'll confess something. Yeah. I haven't watched this trailer incessantly like I did the other ones. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. And I think that I say that in a positive way, where the saga films or even Rogue One, because I almost consider it a saga film. Yeah. Uh, because it's part of some big moment where you're like looking yeah. like ever had I, this one I just kind of was like can't wait to see it but I think you might be referencing uh, correct me if I'm wrong out there the law enforcement guy who oh. is in Rogue One chasing oh, down Dr. Evanson and Ponda Baba maybe. who also is in the Afra comic now okay. and has mm. a relationship with one of the decranated de characters uh, yeah I, I glanced it might, over I heard, I heard that it might I glanced be. over but you know the other reason why because I, I also have not watched it yeah. That many times. But you know why that is also for, as compared to like The Force Awakens and Last Jedi? Because this movie comes out in a month. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, or whatever, a month yeah. and a half. Oh, yeah, there's a little and, bit of a, oh, I'll see it in a month. It, it's coming out soon. It's like the, yeah. the other trailer's like, oh, I gotta wait five months. Let me watch it again. Let me watch it again. It's like, I, I'm, it, I know I'm gonna watch this movie. So, I, yep, I'm in. I like the trailer. Um, I like the little hidden imagery. Yeah. Maybe I'll glance over it a couple different times, but do I care about the story? Right now, I do. Yeah. yeah, I think I think it's, I think they did a really good job of making us care a yeah. bit more and giving us enough to bite onto. But also, like you said, I usually pick this stuff apart. But I try. I watched it about five times. I didn't watch it like mm. a did little. Did you catch anything inside of there that you felt? Just like... not not really. Apart from like the obvious stuff, like Lando and what looks like the Sabat game yeah. and, and uh, all the amazing creature work and stuff. That's really what I was kind of more blown away by was mm. how much of a unique visual world that they've managed to create. And also, I think that going back to what you said as well they've done a really good job of being like, this is a different version of Han, just like James Bond or something. Right. It's like, don't try and watch it to see young Harrison Ford, you know, watch New Hope for that. Like, watch this movie and see like a different version. Yeah, and I think that what, I think what we're gonna wind up getting is, and I'm okay with this, I think that we're gonna wind up, everybody's gonna come out and go, didn't remind me of Harrison Ford whatsoever. But I did get to learn a lot about Han Solo, the character, because Lawrence Kasdan wrote it. Mm -hmm. Lawrence Kasdan, once again, apparently wrote this incredible script that we're going to learn a lot of backstory about what transfers into the original trilogy. And mm -hmm. well, when, when it, the goal needs to be, no matter who's playing, that you feel that character, and by the time you watch New Hope inside of Mos Eisley, you go, I know so much more about this person yeah. now. Mm -hmm. And it can't detract from that. You don't want it to take away from it. You want it to add to it, like, that's why he's that way. That's why he's so cocky, kind of lame. Yeah, it's, it's the power of, and I know not everyone loved it, but it's the power of what they did with Rogue One, where what was originally a, like a laughable flaw that fans laughed about said, well, why would you leave that weakness in the Death Star? Suddenly when you watch it, you're like, oh my God. Right. Like he dedicated his life to do that, to take down the Empire. And right. It's kind of adding to canon in a way that, like you said, it just always makes you go, 
oh, that's why. Yeah. Well, oh, that's why that came from. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, and, and I don't like the DL44 moment is nice, and I think we all don't want those heavy handed mm -hmm. moments. Yeah, we'll probably get the Kessel one. We'll see him get his blasters. Cool. As long as, and I trust the Kazdans that, that yeah. we have those moments, which would be fun, but also have these character building moments, like you say. When we see him in Jalman's Cantina, we know what that journey, how it began. And I, that 10 years, it uh, gives me an odd, weird hope and feeling that we might get some kind of sequel. Yeah. Uh, you know, that that's possible if we got 10 years to play with. I don't know if we want that. Uh, we'll see after this movie, but right. it, it's an interesting build. Yeah, it's interesting. And I think the other thing, like I said, my prediction on the, the main thing is that it's going to be really is going to be Chewbacca's story. Where we're going to mm -hmm. learn more about Chewie than we ever knew. You're obviously mm -hmm. going to learn about Solo, hence the, yep. the name of the movie. But the, the, Chewie's going to be, the, the I think, the main story we learn a lot about. But Lando, Donald Glover is going to be the standout of mm -hmm. the film. I think there's Definitely. going to be so much more of him, connection with him. But I, what I don't want to see is I don't want to see that droid over, try to overshadow him. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see that. I don't. I like. I got it. Like I said, I got it already. I, in with K2SO, and it worked. Don't do it for the sake of doing it because I. That was the only thing that worried me about this trailer was something about that droid that just looked was way too familiar of a droid I just saw not. Yeah, two years ago. I think mm -hmm. that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. All right, what's next? All right, speaking of Solo, it is going to debut. So, uh, you know, in May 15th, around May 15th, uh, stay off Twitter. You'll probably start getting spoilers. It's going <laughs> to debut at the Con Film April Festival. April 15th, right? A, uh, May 15th. May 15th, sorry. Except for May 15th screening. Thinking of Avengers. Con well, yeah. But, uh, and this is uh, surprising, but also not the first time. Attack the Clones and Revenge of the Sith were shown at the yeah. film festival back in 2002, 2005, respectively. It's not any contest. It's just a special screening. So we'll see. Uh, what do you feel about that? Um, I think that this is a smart move. Yeah. I, for, for this movie, it's a smart move. I think that, well... Especially if they have confidence in it, then it's then it's an absolute smart move. But I think that it's a, this movie with all the problems that it had in production and the fact that it, it, we just got the full trailer for it a month and a half before it mm -hmm. comes out. Um, you want to get a little buzz on it. You want to get people talking yeah. about it. You want to have people you know, having conversations about it. And this isn't one of those movies like the saga films to where you've got to keep it so under wraps. You, you still don't want people to spoil stuff, but you want people mm -hmm. talking about it. Yeah, I, I think that it's. I think it shows that they have uh, a lot of belief in whatever version they have of it right now. Yeah. Because obviously, when it first came, everyone was like, "Well, the last movie that previewed at Cannes was uh, Revenge of the Sith," and we all know how that went, or whatever. But the reality is, if they're they a lot showing, of money, Revenge yeah. Of the Sith. yeah, and also if they're showing it there, I think it means they believe in it. I think it works because actually, like with the story stuff, like with Rogue One, that was a movie that a lot of people I know who didn't really love Star Wars before adored because they felt like it was a cool war movie. And yeah. I think screening this at an international film festival, if you're saying it's like a Western heist movie, means that you might be getting some reviews, some thoughts from people who aren't necessarily big Star Wars heads who just say, this is a great genre movie. Right. Or this is an amazing bit of filmmaking. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think it's interesting. I think it does bode well for the confidence in the movie, though. I mean, detractors could say well, they were confident about Attack of the Clones mm -hmm. uh, and Revenge of the Sith, but, you know, Clones is my least favorite Star Wars film, but Sith uh, has a special place in my heart. So uh, I, I, I take it uh, as just overall good sign, and yeah. it's interesting, and it's and it's different. And, 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 and you, you, this is a great point, Rosie, about this is a different kind of yeah. genre Star Wars film that we're expecting to get a little bit more of a Western vibe. Well, little, because there's no embargo, Ocean's though. Vibe. But there's no embargo once you see it, though. That's the thing, is that? Yeah. So you're going you're gonna to get reviews like before. That's, I mean, that's, it's yeah, a, that's a thing. Yeah, I'm staying offline, man. But what... I, what for you, yeah, but I mean, that's you're starting to put, like you said, you yeah. got to have confidence in the in the reviews because Revenge of the Sith, you know, whatever they were saying, that the reviews in that movie were pretty good. Yeah, all the, of the yep, prequels yep. had that, you know, the big, especially because it had been so long. And yeah. but I mean, also, I think you're right. Not having an embargo and it coming out, you know, nine days, it will be like nine days before it comes out anywhere else, means that they probably have quite a lot of confidence that the reviews right. will be good because usually they would just hold it off for a really long time. Yeah. So yeah. that to me says that they've had some really positive recent screeners, or at least they've had some people look over it whose opinions they care about who said, this will hit so-and-so audience. Right.
because there's so many Star Wars films now, they don't, I mean, this is not the way I would like to see it, but I feel like they probably see that they don't need every Star Wars movie to hit the core Star Wars base, right. mm. which I think you should always be going for, but I think they probably see this as like a, oh, this could be a really cool addition that will maybe get a bunch of really good reviews about how fantastic the filmmaking is yeah, or about how I it's a different genre I movie. think it should be a mixture of both, and I think yeah. by, by having Lawrence Kasdan write the script, I think you are actually Definitely. playing towards the hardcore Star Wars fan. Um, before we move to the next story, one other thing I forgot to mention up top is we are also on iTunes now, and, and well, not just iTunes, you can download, if you're on Android, you can go to pod, the Podcast One app and and get us there. We were number one in TV and film last week. We were, I think as of today, number three, so you can, if you want to listen to Jedi Council on your drive to work or at the gym, all you need to do is go to either subscribe to the feed on iTunes or go download it on Podcast One, and it's, it's available there for you, so go and do that. Please leave us a comment and rate. Ken, what's next? All right, this is a story on Movie Phone uh, saying that Lucasfilm digitally scans all actors' faces for reference later. And this is interesting. Uh, in some ways, some people might worry that, well, we're going to get, uh, you know, if uh, a digital Carrie Fisher in uh, Episode 9. We already saw in Rogue One. We also saw a little bit of a digital Carrie Fisher in Episode 8, mm-hmm. the scene, the, the Leia Poppin scenes, as, as it's referred to <laughs> now. Uh, was a mix of a practical Carrie Fisher and, and a CGI Carrie Fisher. Uh, Last Jedi VFX supervisor Ben Morris, who also is a pilot of one of the Resistance bombers, uh, says we always digitally we will always digitally scan all the lead actors in the film. We don't know if we're going to need them. We don't intentionally scan them as archive process. It's for reference later. Left out of this article though. Uh, that's why there's not, that's not misleading, but they leave out the fact that uh, now Black Series uh, Hasbro stuff yes. is based on mm-hmm. digital scans of actors yeah. to improve the quality of the figures that has i think probably more to do it mm-hmm. than this article's giving and, credit and for. i think people are getting worked yeah. up for nothing yeah, yeah i do as well and that was immediately my first thought the black series stuff and also the disney um platinum line or whatever they call that they sell in store yeah the molds on this lines of them are so incredible the face molds yeah. and it's all because of digital scanning yeah and i think like because of the way that licensing rights work for likeness you when you become part of a big franchise film like this, you often have to sign away your likeness, right? Sometimes people don't, like with, I know uh, Batman vs Superman, Carvel did, Affleck didn't, but in this, Disney obviously has a tight one because the look of those new figures is so mm-hmm. unreal and it's all down to digital. I, I was pretty disappointed that they didn't mention that in the article yeah. too. Yeah, I think, yeah, uh, the new line, the Tarkin, the yeah. Peter Cushion, which yeah. of course now we saw Rogue One that they did that really well. Tarkin, and then the Hoth Leia, which is my favorite Leia of all time. That Hoth Leia, ready for action. That 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 is finally a, a, a figure worthy of Carrie Fisher and mm-hmm. Leia because they have struggled historically, going even back to seventy six, yeah. seventy seven with Kenner to capture Carrie Fisher in, in figure form, and the new digital scans are paying off. And I, 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 that's actually kind of exciting. Yeah, I like the fact that they do this. I think it's smart for them to do this. Yeah. I mean, why not just have the reference? I mean, it's the same yeah. thing. Hell, when we do Schmodown matches, it's like let's 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 get a let's get a picture let's get a picture of you if we, if we need it for later on yeah. down down the road if we yeah. do another it, match that way you have it in store. It, Cody, grab the Polaroid. It's yeah. just an extension of continuity, basically. Yeah. It's digital yeah. continuity. But the flip side of that too is if down the line they want to use it for other things as the technology gets better, because we're gonna look back 10, 15 years from now. And this version and the Tarkin version are going to look like Planet of the Dinosaurs. Yeah, of you know, course. Right? It's going to look terrible. And it looks so good. When you were with the Tarkin one, you know, it's like you could still notice it, but it was an improvement from what they I were. I was like very Tron, impressed. Because yeah, Tron was oh. the first time I ever saw when they did yeah, it with yeah. Jeff Bridges, Bridges. And it looked so jarring. But that was 2010. Yeah. Right. Then you jump six years later, you get the Cushing one. Jump to 2022, 2032. When that, when when the, it's you're not even able to tell anymore. I mean, even mm-hmm. the stuff you look at what they did with the uh, the Benjamin Button stuff, you know, for the with the Marvel yeah. movies with Downey. There's a lot of improvements coming. And I think that this by them doing this, um, it, it makes sense to me. Yeah. All right. What's next? Absolutely. All right. Uh, let's jump to Solo, a Star Wars story. Potential spoilers. Potential, if, potential spoilers there, Goatster. If uh, you still have that graphic, I don't know. Just spoiler warning. Slight stuff about pop, possible plot. I must have. I need more coffee in this. <laughs> That's all right. We <laughs> Let like me start up. This is live. All right. So we might know some of the origins of Han Solo's iconic gold dice first appeared in New Hope, of course, and became a big plot point in The Last Jedi. It almost was a relatively big scene in The Force Awakens, but it was cut. 
we now believe, possibly, that this could have something to do with Amelia Clark's character, Kira. There is a little promotional uh, photo that was uh, someone tweeted out, one of those things that kind of gets out, and the younger version of Kira, the American graffiti era Kira, <laughs> uh, has the dice in her hand. That doesn't mean they're hers. It might mean she stole them from Han. I don't know. But it could come into play, which uh, connects to this idea that the dice, Christian, are this connective thread in the Han Solo story now. Yeah, I think Rosie was was right. I think Amelia Clark is toast because <laughs> I think that's one of the, how much more sense would that make yeah. why he's got it without ever referencing her, you know? It's like we've got so we know that the those dice they pop up uh, a little bit in um in New Hope. Um yeah. is New Hope, right? Have, yeah, 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 yeah. And so it, it pops Chewy up Chewie bumps him in his head. Right, 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 right. Yeah. I always get confused. Yeah. But uh it pops up in New Hope and then obviously the big thread through Last Jedi, but I do think that they are hers. I think that that because even that shot that the second trailer or the second teaser trailer when when they the when they're going through the on the speeder or whatever they're on and and you see them there, maybe that was that was hers having for the joy, joy ride or maybe that's the first time they meet. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I guess they're younger kids. Maybe they, they both have a pair was also something I thought like it's something they won together right, like, or stole like together matching and lockets. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. it's that that's their teen little thing whichever car they steal whichever speeder yeah. they steal or ever they always pop them in and it's like they right. know something like that. I do think she'd we're gonna die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, because of that, and I do. I think it's. I think they're doing a good job of leaking or allowing people to leak stuff that makes you go, oh. Right. Because also, it makes people. I saw a couple of people on Twitter who were like kind of uh, Raylo, Kylo fan things that were kind of like, you know, this is interesting but disappointing, and it started that conversation where when this means so much to the Leia side of the family, to Leia's kid, like, what does that add to what the dice mean and it's really it's getting fans to have a conversation right, about right. what it means to them when all it is is just a picture for all we know she just picks them out of the <laughs> yeah. the falcon right. it's like this right. exact you still see it with like uh, uh there's like a little girl in a ray costume with it and the staff has a lightsaber and it's purple and they're like, da, 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 da. like just, <laughs> I, it's I a target wanna, ad i know? want it to have meaning i want the dice to have meaning yeah, I, too. Yeah. I think that adds um a more emotional tie that when you see them hmm. again in four then and then to see them again and see how much relevance they have in eight um that that's that's the type of stuff I've always wanted them to do canon wise with yeah. movies is I want little things from before like you were talking about before with like the Death Star yeah. like, like moments like that where oh that's why oh that's why oh and then when you go back and you, it makes you watch the movies and the shows and it makes you watch them differently when yeah. you watch them again and to be very fair to the prequels is the same thing like when you watch the prequels for for good or bad there are certain times you watch the prequels and you go oh okay I just watch that and then when you watch the mm -hmm. the original trilogy you go well, that makes a lot of sense there. So, so I'm very, um, I'm very excited to see how this all pans out, and I'm actually really excited to see the chemistry between yeah. the two of them because that's going to be, that's another make or break. I haven't been quite sold on that yet. If I want to nitpick, yeah. and I mm -hmm. often don't like to these days, but I'll nitpick on that. I'm more, as as one of the biggest Game of Thrones, Song of Ice and Fire fans around, as you know. I love Amina Clark. She is my Khaleesi, except for she doesn't have a lot of chemistry with the Darios. Yeah. She doesn't have a lot of chem. She had great chemistry with Momoa. She has mm -hmm. so uh, you know I, I worry, and it's not sometimes it's not necessarily on her. No, um, that's just sometimes the oh. casting and everything. So I, I want to see that. Yeah, I'll put it on her a little bit. I'll say I'll say the thing is with her. I I love her in Game of Thrones. I yeah. think she's phenomenally cast in them. She, other things she's been in, she's not the best actress in a lot of things that she's been in. She hasn't been great in a lot of mm -hmm. things. I, I also wonder if that's like a lot to do with scripts because say mm -hmm. like I, I loved the casting of her in Terminator but that was not uh, yeah she was uh, fine it, yeah it. no no it didn't it yeah. didn't work in no, the end but, at all and yeah. that's like script it's her with the and I'm a bit worried about that too because Alden is like great in some stuff but also like can definitely be it can stiff. find it hard to yes yeah, yeah. stiff and he can find it hard to find that so the two of them together could either be like amazing wow they found each other or it could be yeah. like yeah. Well, I, I think and, and, uh, Kit Harrington's a good example. I think that chemistry grew yeah, as yeah, yeah. season yeah. seven of Game of Thrones grew, uh, and some it was cold on purpose early on. But I, I think they found their footings as performers, yeah. and, I, and I hope that's the case. I mean, that's that's they I'm had a leg up though too, that, because those characters are so beloved at that point. Six years yeah. of build yeah. up, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. The other option, which I guess is like less likely, but I think would be really interesting. They might not actually have like a romantic chemistry. They might mm -hmm. really just keep them as friends. Yeah, yeah that's a good point. Too. We're just assuming. Yeah, I, guess. I mean, yeah, it makes it makes a lot of sense. I would like it if it was romantic, simply because I I enjoy the flawed nature of Han and Leia's relationship. The stuff mm -hmm. where they struggle, the backstory of that, the fact that it 
you know, they butted heads. So him having a past is so natural and real. Right. Mm -hmm. But there is also the opportunity that they could just be like these really close childhood friends who for some reason, you know, kind of lost stars thing, torn apart by the That's empire, right, right, brought right, back right. together, da, da, da. Yeah, I, I, would, I think that I would prefer if she doesn't become a, a mole or doesn't become, I don't want to see her go bad. I think that's a possibility. I think it's a very good possibility. I think when we do like scoreboard, that might mm -hmm. be a, a pick for some people and it wouldn't, yeah. it's not the worst pick. But I, <laughs> I know that I think actually the Woody Harrelson turning and being the guy, the mentor that, that turns on him is the more predictable. Yeah. yeah. But I think in this case, I wouldn't mind predictable. I don't want to see Lando do it because then it takes away from, from Bespin no, no. when that happens. Yeah. Um, I think if Beckett does it, then to me, it, 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 it opens up the fact of more what you're talking about, why yeah. you could have the sacrifice of... Amanda and also, Clark. sometimes those tropes are tropes for a reason. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. it's not the older mentor. Like it fits into the Western stuff as well. You know, we're all out yeah. for ourselves, kid. Da, right. Da, da. Right. I, I would like to see that, and Harrison's great. He would probably do that really well in a way that still makes you not hate him, but kind of wish it didn't happen. Absolutely. <laughs> It'd be like Billy the Kid watching John Tunstall get shot in Young Guns. <laughs> one of the greatest movies of all time. My, can I, my 1%, this is, you know, you go to Vegas, and I've been saying this other places, you go to Vegas, and you put that like hundred dollar bet down on the <laughs> brown. Yeah, put? brown. It's that Amelia Clark's actually infus nest, and people are like, "Well, the <laughs> size is off," and everything. I'm like, "Yeah, I know, but I'm still going to put the hundred dollars down and hope I win the Super Bowl." Uh, well, that actually so links into something I'm going to say later. Who so, are not, who are not, who, wait, infus wait. nest is the the villain that has been revealed to be a, a female character, right. but we don't know much about her. I've been studying studying IMDb. Yeah. There's no actor that corresponds to that role. I, so you think I, it's a little Dark Knight Rises? I, I think it could be. Yeah. I, don't I know. think. It's, yeah, I yeah. think so, and that links into some of the toy stuff we're going to talk about yeah. later so i really want to go in on a, like a thousand dollar bet let's yeah, go to let's vegas do it. i'm, I'm into it too. I, i'll go for that because i i it crossed my mind but i i like that a lot now you yeah. put it out there i'm like i'm into that also i i enjoy like a good little turnaround and ha <laughs> it also it works on the gray area of han if that yeah. was it because he could still support her and maybe try and save her even though yeah. she's on that dark side you oh. know if she's the real villain rather than just turns that could be really just, really cool. there's no there's no uh, sorry. I know we're gonna love it's the like Kaiser Soze. Stuff. Kaiser no, Soze. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Bettany's character, Dryden Voss. I don't think's a main character. He's, yeah, I, 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 don't I don't think know. at all. I, I think he's a. I think he's a main character, but I think he's like a it, scapegoat. He's a, he's, he's kind of. He's mm. a, I still think uh, not that I want the appearance, but like Jabba could be the one that they're getting the team together for. We don't hey, know all that, that stuff. That would be so cool. <laughs> so I still think there's this vacuum yeah. of villain, and I think everyone's focusing on that. And well, a month not? before, and we don't know yet. Yeah, yeah. But why not have Jabba? Because the thing with Jabba is that we know that he him and Han, I mean, because look, what is canon, mm -hmm. unfortunately, is that silly scene that they put into mm -hmm. New Hope yeah. um, with the whole stepping on the tail and all yeah. that garbage. Um, but it's canon. Yeah. And at the point we see in episode four, he's buddy buddy with Han. Mm -hmm. He yep. likes Han. He likes what, Han, my boo. Yeah, kid. he likes yeah. what Han has done. In, and I also, I don't want to see him and Boba Fett feuding in this story. No. No. I don't want to, like, that doesn't happen until like, I. They have to be comrades. They've yeah. got to be, if Boba Fett is going to show up in this movie, and if he does, it's going to be a quick cameo, whatever it might be in a mm -hmm. scene, they've just got to be like, oh, Boba Fett, you know, yeah, it's, 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 a like, it's like it's a nod, like it's a, a respect. It's like, cause they, or, or even Han, you know, I don't like that guy, whatever it, yeah. whatever it might yeah, be. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. I don't want to see any feud happening with them, and I want to, if they do throw Jabba in there, mm -hmm. Jabba and Han got to have to be tight at this mm -hmm. point. Yeah. I, yeah. would, I would love to see that. It, I, any Jabba Han stuff always makes me happy because my biggest, most ridiculous fan theory is that, that I really love is the Han as a Force-sensitive person. And a lot of the Jabba Han stuff works in that, like not needing a translator. Like, oh, wow. And it, it really adds in. I've written so much about that. But yeah, I, I would love if they put Jabba in this movie. I well, want it to happen, but I don't know if it. You will. don't think Jabba's gonna show up? I, I, I'd, I'd put a. That's definitely gonna be one of my scoreboard things. I'm gonna put. I'll put a high. I'm gonna go. I'm even if it's a quick cameo. If he makes a cameo, yeah, yeah, if he makes a cameo in the Phantom Menace, he's making a cameo in Solo. <laughs> okay, you know? that, that's a fair. You point. know what I mean? It's like <laughs> and, and, that, and that's the hut as well, right? So. Yeah. Well, oh. you know what's so funny about that is that my because I'm not like my the stuff with the names. My daughter is so good. She hasn't even seen. Uh, yeah. All Clone Wars, and she was talking. She, 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 she was telling me. She said about. She was giving me quizzes, and she's like, "So let me ask you." She's like, "Who is Jabba's uncle?" And I go, "You mean brother?" She's like, "You never brother." She's like, "Uncle," and I'm like, his, "Well, I thought his brother was zero. She's like, no, "That's his uncle." <laughs> and and I was, as my sixth child, and I was like, "You're, you're hey, absolutely she's right." She's ready to compete. She's ready yeah. to compete. She could beat Mark Andreco. I'll tell you that. So, <laughs> all right. What's next? All right.
There's a story uh, I, I missed last week. I guess you guys didn't discuss this, but Tony Gilroy and the Rogue One. Mm -hmm. No, it came out chance. afterwards. It came out yeah, afterwards. We should talk okay. about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're right. The timing, uh, the timing is right. I, I trust the notes. I trust the notes. Tony Gilroy, we all know he was brought in to do some rewrites, some redirecting uh, on those infamous Rogue One reshoots. Cody, did you know they did some reshoots for that movie? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so he uh, he was on a podcast, uh, the the moment with Brian Koppelman. And he just started spewing some stuff mm -hmm. about what went on. Not What did he say, Ken? Not details, but he said stuff like this. I've never been interested in Star Wars ever, so I had no reverence for it whatsoever. I was unafraid about that, and they were in such a swamp. They were in such in so much terrible, terrible trouble <laughs> that all you could do was improve their position. If you look at Rogue, all the difficulty with Rogue, all the confusion of it, and all the mess, and in the end, when you get it in there, it's actually very, very simple to solve, said Gilroy, because you sort of go, this is a movie where folks just look, everyone is going to die. So it's a movie about sacrifice. Uh, we also went, into, went on to say that making another Star Wars film does not appeal to him. He thinks of Rogue One not as a Star Wars movie. It says in many ways to me, it's a Battle of Britain movie. So let's dig into this. I don't think he's saying anything that's surprising. No, no I don't know but if he he's be, being brutal. He's, he's being brutal. I don't know if he should be talking. Yeah, uh, it's it's uh, surprisingly honest. Yeah. <laughs> Especially because the main thing about that is everyone's like, how's Edward's always been such a good guy about it? Like, he's never said, the director of Rogue, he's never said anything No, because he's been playing. No, because the whole point with that is, which is what we say, the difference between Gareth Edwards and um, Lord and Miller mm -hmm. is that Edwards played ball, yep. Lord and Miller did not. Basically, the same, t the same scenario, yep. if you believe all the reports, was presented, whereas where they, they came to Gareth Edwards and said, this isn't working, we're bringing in Gilroy. Are you cool with it? Because if not... Yeah. And he said, I'm cool. And I'll sit there with Gilroy and we'll work on it and I'll play ball and I'll be out there talking. Because from all the reports that we heard about that movie yeah. is that it was a mess and there was mm -hmm. a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tony Gilroy, the guy who helped him, just said it, it was a mess. Yeah. It had a lot of problems. So yeah. those concerns basically confirmed from the guy who <laughs> directed the movie. So anybody saying, remember all the crap that we got back then? Oh my yeah. God. We would talk about it. We'd say, like, this seems like there's a lot of problems. And he'd be like, oh, you guys are making too much of it. There's always, there's no problem. It's like, the, the, there was clearly, when you yeah. hear that much, the same thing goes with Solo. Mm -hmm. um, but this is, uh, this is something that just goes to a bigger concern of hopefully that this, and I'm not talking, JJ's going to handle his business in yeah. episode nine. We know this. But moving on, this stuff's got to stop happening. Yeah. So, but Gilroy talking as much as he did, probably shouldn't have, probably should have stuck to that NDA. <laughs> um, but, you know, he, he proved what everybody knew already. Yeah, he really, uh, he really just opened up and confirmed everything that a lot of us have sort of said. Mm -hmm. I like, I think the most interesting point away from the kind of drama of it is the Battle of Britain thing, because all mm -hmm. the most popular and kind of good takes about Rogue One and how it's this great war movie. There was that very famous article that was like, this is the first time that the Star Wars franchise has referenced that it's actually about war. And everyone was like, well, it's in the title, but yeah, we get what you mean. And I thought that was interesting to kind of have him outwardly say that and yeah. kind of show that that side was probably something coming from him. Uh, but I generally, I was I was pretty shocked. That yeah, he... yeah. Say that to, to Nanta the Ewok who died at the ATSC. <laughs> it's not about war. <laughs> what do you, what do you uh, think yeah. about these comments? This you think he uh, should have said anything? Uh, yeah, you know, it, it's a weird time to, for Star Wars, right? Mm -hmm. So stuff like this comes out. But yeah, you're right. There, there's a difference between, you know, when when Solo went to reshoots after Ron Howard had taken over. Uh, I'm not. I'm not even talking about the initial like. But there was that story of yeah. oh, they're going back in. Well, that we know that happens. Right. Alden hiring uh, an acting coach coming in for Alden. That's relatively normal. Yeah. Doesn't mean that when there's some smoke, there isn't some fires. But we knew because you can. The proof is in the trailers. Right. Yeah. The proof is in Ben Mendelsohn going, oh, there's an entirely different movie out there of right. this thing. Uh, while some of that's commonplace, this was not commonplace, and we did know that. And I think Gilroy did a good job because I, I generally still really like Rogue One. Yeah. The problems are first and second act for me, but I think it's characters, and I think he was brought in to kind of make that. So I don't think he was the one that came in and said, guess what, kill them all. Mm -hmm. I think he kind of was like, how do we I think put this already, all together? I think they're pretty confident that from what I heard is that they're always gonna die. Yeah. Right. But right, there right. was a different way that they did it the first time around right. that the studio was like, this is way too dark. Yeah. And what 
Gilroy said that confirms the stuff that I had kind of heard about mm -hmm. is he said what we need to know is yeah they all die but this is all about the sacrifice mm -hmm. yeah and exactly. the sacrifice is what you really see yeah. in that movie and it changes the angle rather than being like this is a bleak movie where everyone dies it makes it oh my god these are the people you never hear about these are the stories right. that got that uh, disc to Leia in A New Hope, like, and you, and they're not the people who get the medals. That right, was like right. my big takeaway the first time I watched it is like after the medal ceremony, it's about like who saves who and who tells the stories. And I think they did a really good job of that. Right. I really enjoyed Rogue One. A lot of the critiques and really good critiques I've heard of it are very clearly about the narrative issues that come from yeah. multiple mm -hmm. reshoots, not being the original vision. And, right. th and I think those are fair, but I think it's a good addition to canon. And mm -hmm. uh, I think Gilroy's in a, He's in a kind of special place because this is what he does. So I mm -hmm. don't think anyone's going to be like, oh, you're in yeah, trouble yeah. now. They're just going to yeah, be like, exactly. They're yeah, just yeah. going to be like, yeah. cool. Can you come fix this next movie that someone messes yeah, he, up? Because like he said it up top, though. He doesn't care. He, he never cared right. about Star Wars. And they ask, you know, I don't really want to do another one. Yeah. So it's like, it's like, yeah, I'll talk about I'll, what do you want to know? Yeah. Yeah. It's not like somebody who's going, oh, I'm not, I want to work in Star Wars again. Yeah. I'm not going to say anything. Tony Gilroy doesn't care. <laughs> I did yeah. like his like, he's like, I had no reverence for it. He manages. He talks talks about stuff in this really funny way where he's being incredibly disrespectful in the worst case or at least like a bit shady in the best case but he does it in this really dignified way so yeah. he's like I had no reference for yeah. the franchise and you're like wow maybe that's that's like an adult take on that yeah. like, you know what it reminds me it reminds me of the wolf from Pulp Fiction <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right it's, it's, yeah. it's slightly it's slightly like this backhanded like yeah. I'm not one of those nerds that cares right? about yeah. some of these characters like, I did my job yeah but yeah. I'm okay with it and again that third act the Rogue One's some of my favorite Star Wars stuff out there. Obviously, I yeah. love Radis, I love that stuff. And when it's referenced in other things, like from a certain point of view, when mm -hmm. they talk about, uh, well, last week, the Battle of Scarif, I get kind of excited. Like, oh, yeah. I know what that was. It was pretty bad. Yeah, so I yeah. like that. All right, what's All up? Right, final it? story All in right. movie news. We got this one. This is uh, our good friend Frosty, Stephen Weintraub, over at Collider.com. Uh, interviewed Mark Hamill. You know, there's all the, a lot of talk going around about Carrie Fisher should ever should she ever be recast? And it comes up. It was, uh, you know, we talked about it when the bad tragic death happened, and then now mm -hmm. after the movie, it's come up, and then that fan pulled the story that got out of hand about Meryl Streep. So we asked, uh, or uh, uh, Fro Fro Frosty at Collider asked uh, uh, Mark Hamill about it, and Hamill said, "I don't know what the specific plans were for that character, but since Han was more prominent in seven, Luke's more prominent." In eight, we assume that Leia would be more prominent in nine, especially with the dynamic dynamic of Kylo being her son. I think it would be tough recasting because she's so indelibly linked to that character. So uh, yeah. not surprising in the sense this is like a sister. Uh, I, I I would find it tough if yeah. Yeah. you know they right. recast it if I was Mark. And normally, like the so Frosty had come in here when he told me he was going to um, he was going to interview Hamill and and I. Uh, you know, not to pat myself on the back for this one. I told, I asked him to ask that question because I mm. wanted, I wanted to know Mark Hamill's take yeah. on that thing because we've been talking about it so long. Plus the fact of how that relationship the two of them had, um, and he said exactly what I think a lot of people are thinking. And hard to cast her. But the other thing is, and he doesn't know the script yet. I, I truly believe that they've asked him, a million people have asked him about whether or not he's read nine or he knows what's going on in nine. I don't really think he knows the whole story yet or the mm -hmm. plan yet. Yeah. But what I will say is, I think that he, uh, if you asked him a little bit more in depth uh, and you were able to get the cameras off, I think that he would agree that this story needs to take place years later yeah. and start with her. She's passed on. Yeah. But what do you think about his comments? Yeah, I think they were completely predictable in the yeah. best way. Yeah, I yeah, mean, yeah. Mark and, and also that, I think that he also mentioned in that stuff, it was like talking about his, how it affected his family. Like it was a lot about the loss of Carrie. And I think mm -hmm. that reflects that in the answers. I personally think that recasting her would be like a disservice, not just like to Carrie, but on a personal level, but also just to the films. It would be very strange. She's very iconic. Um, I think you're right, 100%. It, it starts. You know, they did it with Han. They were gonna put the funeral, they didn't put the funeral. You do the same with Leia and it sucks because I wanted Nine to be the Leia movie. I wanted to see her and Driver together working on that relationship. It's not gonna happen, so move right. it forward. She's passed on and you know, it's all about that loss drives the rest of the right. resistance. Mm -hmm. Ken, do you think, let's say um, that the passive Carrie Fisher had happened during the sh or the post-production 
of of Last Jedi, right? Mm-hmm. Like to where I mean, it kind of did, but like but really in the middle of it, yeah, in the middle of it. But I mean, like, do you think that if they because we knew kind of the plans, everyone thinks the plans going into nine. Do you think that they would have retooled it to where Luke wouldn't have passed mm-hmm. in in eight? I think that's possible. I think it's very possible. It also, you know. No one's ever really gone, so Force Ghost Luke is something mm-hmm. we're all kind of whether you want whether you're happy with Luke dying in eight, you can kind of say, oh, a Force Ghost right. Luke, Force Ghost Luke, Luke isn't a bad thing. Um, I think it's possible. I think it would have been considered. I, I'm sure it probably was considered. Like, what mm. do we do here? I just think that the, the, the stars unfortunately aligned, unfortunately aligned, where I really do believe Leia's story ended in a good spot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she believes her son is gone, and some people, you're not the first I've heard of, like, hey, I would have liked to see a confrontation. Confrontation, yes, but she says that. She passes everything on to Poe and Ray, and it kind of is like, all right, well, we might not need to go any right. more than that. And it's oh, more yeah. tragedy to Kylo's yeah, story, too. Yeah. 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 I think yeah, it, I, it's, it's much better. Like, the ending, I think it, I would love to see those interactions, but I think you're right. I think yeah. that, and I think the ending is like, it's hopeful. And that was yeah. what Ryan was saying a lot was like they'd left it in this way where she would live on forever and yeah. and that kind of hopeful and we have everything we need, you know, and that's that's her last moment. Yeah. And it's a shame because I do think that in hindsight, if you, obviously you don't ever want to see that stuff coming, but like there could have, if they really wanted, they could have had both of them find the force because they mm. lean into Leia's force right. use and the you know, they're twins. It's like that could have been a moment. But it's you can't tell when that stuff's going to happen, and I'm I'm really yeah. interested to see what JJ does because he was so good at creating and looking back at the OG trilogy mm-hmm. and respecting those characters and stuff. I'm really interested to see how he deals with yeah. the yeah. absence of Leia. Yeah, if, if she had, if the movie had ended where she's like, I'm going to go save Kylo, and they'd left that in, <laughs> then we then we have the, right. some kind of issue. And that's where I say go back. I'm okay with the recasting to the character, this historic, mm-hmm. iconic character. If we needed it. Now I don't think we needed it. Finish the story, but yeah. now I don't think we did. Because I was, I was saying the same thing. Yeah. I think that if if we, if we it was left open to her, like, well, what are they going to do with her now? They yeah. said this whole thing. I didn't feel like that at the end of The Last Jedi. I feel yeah. like with the characters, a lot of them, I was like, what the, where the hell are we going now? Mm-hmm. But that, that's why you can actually maneuver that to, you got to have it years later. You can't do the same yeah. thing where you catch up like, a month, two months later. Yeah. It's got to be years later. Um, all right. Now That's it's it time movie to news. move away from movie news, and it's time to introduce you guys once again to the segment we simply like to call What's the Deal with Canon? I'm Greedo. Tip your waitress. <laughs> um, and we are going to talk about everything happening in the world of Star Wars that is that relates to the movies, but it's through comics or video games or television series and whatever it might be we're going to talk about. It. Ken, what do you got? Absolutely. First up is an excerpt from the upcoming Star Wars Yay. Last Shot novel. Uh, you have a copy. I do. I am uh, living down in steerage and don't have money. I'm working <laughs> on Poor it there. bastard. Uh, and we now know, as it was talked about, that Sena Staros, also referred to as Sena Solo, the, her first debut in the comics, uh, is in the novel. There's a history there. I love this character. Love that she's showing up. Any shot that she shows up in, uh, in the movie? Would, uh, I love it. I love it. I I thought it was definitely going to be a no, but after reading this excerpt and seeing that it's like it's Han, Chewie, and her, and there's obviously like a connection there, it's a big deal. There's TIE Fighters at the end. I I think she's probably, maybe even just for a minute, or there'll be a percentage. What's your percentage? Uh, only uh, still only like thirty percent. Thirty percent. So over under thirty percent that Uh, she's in it. I take the under. I'm I'm gonna take the under. I'm gonna take the under. But it it's still they, they. Excuse me, Marvel, excuse me, Marvel, Marvel, think of, com- <laughs> think of the comics. Yeah. Disney, Lucasfilm, with their comics, they know this is a special character. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, that one-shot issue of Lando. It's got a lot her. of good oh. press, too, when that, when that came out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was the good stuff. So it's, a great, it's a great character. So, uh, I mean, I would go less than 5% in the movie. Yeah, I would, too, unfortunately. I was I, trying to be hopeful. No, I <laughs> know. I like, Hope I, is something I, that's a important. good thing around. I <laughs> like that you're, you're hopeful. Um, but, you know, my stance that I'm not going to beat a dead horse but i just until they prove me otherwise i'm going to always go the low on on canon characters yeah. right now but i i i'm with you i yeah. hope it's the over even if it's for a little bit it's the right. the fact that they released this book and it's tied in they've done a really good job of introducing new characters in the books that are going to be in the films right and taking them from the comics or just introducing someone completely new, like holdo or something so i dream and i thought the excerpt was really exciting and good and i hope she's a major character i know it's mm. different parts through the life yeah, yeah, i haven't yeah. read it yet so yeah i yeah. just started reading it last night but i'm like 
10 pages in. I, was, I, I, mm-hmm. I fell asleep. <laughs> not because not the book wasn't good, just because I was exhausted. Um, <laughs> I'm going uh, to really dive into it over the weekend. Really glad that I got it. Um, it's one of those books that I'm ex- really excited for. I always get excited when I get a new book in the mail, right. but it's like there's certain stories I really want to learn more yeah. about. And I want to... and I do want to read this before I see the movie because I want to learn even a little bit more when I jump into it because that was one of my favorite experiences about Rogue One was reading Catalyst first. Yeah. Yeah. And if I can go read this and then it does happen and I'm still I'm still going to be hopeful that one of these yeah. days I read these books and it tie, and, and more stuff ties into the actual movie like a nod of Yep. And I know that it's usually backwards. I understand that it's like the movie comes out first or movie the script is written and then the authors kind of take it and run with it. But, you know, fingers crossed that something like that happens. But the book does seem to be pretty um, intriguing. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's next? Next up is those comical booklets. Comical booklets. I am not caught up. I need to get out to my shop, Earth 2 at Northridge. Hey, guys, Star Wars 46, Darth Vader 14, Star Wars Thrawn number three. You're caught up, Rosie. I am not. I, I am caught up, and I'm really sorry because there's so much that happens. Catch us up. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, so. This is Rosie's report. That's yeah. a great cover, by the way. Yeah. 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 Darth Vader. I, I love it. Yeah. These, it's like a horror are, film. Yeah. These three in conjunction are easily like the three best kind of all together comics mm. on Star Wars that have come out kind of concurrently. Why? So Star Wars 46, it's really good. It's like peak space opera, also literal opera. So it's, um, they're going to Mon Cala, the mm. lair and everyone. And it sets up this whole idea of they need to, uh, save them off and uh, they need to steal them off and, and save them off. And there's a big, like kind of silly, uh, switcheroo, but it's really just classic good Star Wars adventure. And you go, oh, Mon Cala, that's good. I always want to know more mm. about that. And then I read Darth Vader afterwards, which is also set on Mon Cala, And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, and mm. I was like, I see where you're Does going. Does it reference it back? In, and not so much. It's more of like okay. a thematic sure, sure. thing. But basically this is, 14 is like a massive issue with big spoiler alerts. Mm. Um, mm. We find out who the Jedi Master is, the mysterious Jedi. Called, he's called Jedi Master Bar. Mm. Uh, there's been a lot of speculation. Is he someone else? Is, is it a new name? But it turns out that on Mon Cala, in this timeline, which is uh, just after Revenge of the Sith, he actually started a new, or what would have been a new Jedi Academy. Mm. And that's the big reveal in this. And it's super exciting. And we meet it as Vader is about to Rex go on to Mon Cala and... Mm-hmm. And so that was a. So the I, academy's on Mon Cala. It, it, it's a would-be academy. Okay. He has students, and basically, your reveal. This is more of a like because we know what happens to the Jedi. This yeah. is more of a like he tried to start a Jedi academy. Lo and behold, they're probably all going right. to get murdered. Right. But at this point, has like a few students. They're still alive. Things probably not going to go very well for them. Mm-hmm. But it's really interesting because it really builds on the idea of Mon Cala as like a hub of the rebellion and a hub of a safe place for the Jedi. Uh, Thrawn three. He's just killing it. I love it. If you love Rebels, this is a book you need to pick up. You can even actually specifically just pick up this issue uh, from three. So it's all about uh, Price. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's how she became involved with Thrawn. It's, is it similar to the book? or? Uh, it, it is similar to the book, but it's like so... It, the whole issue, Thrawn's rarely, barely in it. It's very much about her... Um, her family. Her family. Stuff, yeah. It's all about like it still follows that arc of her getting vengeance. Yeah. Uh, well, that's what drives her is to get vengeance for her family, and it's really smartly done because it's a really clear reflection of Thrawn yeah. and how their kind of arcs are entangled. And it reading it after catching up on Rebels, watching all of Rebels and stuff was like I found it to be very very fulfilling story cool. and even though it's only one issue like they could do a whole book about they could mm. do a whole comic about her because this issue is so spot on mm. well there you go guys so you got number 46 for star wars 14 for vader and number three for thrawn out there right now like i told you guys last week right before the show started i finally upped my comicsology hey. uh, subscription so i will be caught up on everything coming next week here so ken is that everything in canon uh, we, we just got the toys for solo we could uh, if there's some pictures up there we got a lot of new toys and figures they're always fun to look yeah. at there like that guy and uh the the, the space dog and the other photo that we got here uh that we got the funko uh, the not funko pops the mighty mugs All right. And this article I'm reading from says Hasbro's kind of sort of version of Funko Pops. Well, <laughs> Mighty Mugs, the original version, were before Funko Pops and still better. Um, those are out. Uh, I, I love don't, that shirt. I, I don't like the new push ones. And then the uh, six inch and three and three quarters yeah. 
uh, figures are out as well. And with those new facial recognition scans, so to speak, uh, they look great. We had kind of seen the six inch Black Series ones already. And uh, yeah, that's that. That's the end of Canon. What do you think about these toys? I have, a, these toys are very cool. I have a, I saw a different toy mm. linking back to Nest, which did add some really interesting old deep cut EU Canon. Oh yeah. So it's the ne Nest and whatever the bike is, mm. but on the back it says Nest and his gang of the, cl the cl Nest Cloud Riders, yeah. which are from the original Marvel uh, comics. Yeah. And I thought that was an interesting, it could just be a reference, but it could also be something that they're pulling. I wouldn't be surprised if they did that yeah, because yeah. Leland Chi said about, I don't know, it must've been like four months ago, he said, you're going to be surprised at how much EU starts to pop up mm -hmm. back into new canon. Yeah. Um, and I think it's stuff like that, stuff in the comics, stuff in the books. Um, so, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if, if Cloud Riders is, is part of that. All right, that's it. That's everything for the world of canon. Now we're going to switch on over and we're going to listen to you guys. And the way we did that is pretty simple. Twitter, we hashtag it. You hashtag Collider Jedi Council. And the Fan Alliance is also part of the Facebook group, the Collider Jedi Council Facebook group. We took some questions from there. We took some questions from Twitter. And here we go, Ken, what do we got? All right, first one up comes from Grayson Rodriguez on Facebook at the Facebook group there. It says, is it possible that Rey will put off training new Jedi because she believed Luke was right? And that might be the reason for Luke to appear as a force ghost, maybe some supplemental training and counseling from him that would just think? That, i mean that's i think that would be the same as say retconning anything else mm -hmm. that ryan johnson did because ryan johnson's whole message in that thing was that luke kind of was wrong yeah. he, he, he realized it himself that he was wrong the conversation he had with yoda turned him around and and he even says it to kylo ren that that he's everything you said and that was wrong there will be yeah. the jedi will i am not the last jedi and, yeah. and she's been this beacon of hope so that would be kind of catastrophic to the whole message if they did it that way. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's uh, it's like an interesting question because Ray has been very conflicted throughout with her kind of use of the force. But I think you're right. I think the end is, you know, even layers, we've got everything we need. You know, she's there, she's ready, and whatever form that will take, it's mm -hmm. probably not going to be... That might be something that comes in to kind of make her question herself, but I think she will probably be there right away to be training those Jedis or probably has already been training them when we meet her five right. years in the future. You think? Yeah, I think she sticks with the plan. I like this idea. I don't say that this is necessarily something Ray will do, but I love exploring the idea of a new kind of Jedi training, mm -hmm. like uh, here, your lightsaber class, uh, force uh, ghost projection class, and also you can still date. <laughs> like, right. you're okay. Right. Right. Like, there could be some newer version of what's going on because Luke wasn't wrong about some of the things, just it was the overall message and the overall not getting involved, which is what that prologue from Jason Fry does right. so well mm -hmm. in explaining it. The Force is like, no, no, you need to choose a side and you need to get involved. So I think maybe if you put it all together, Ahsoka, we saw a different yeah. version of yeah. a Jedi, technically not even a Jedi. Yeah, you can change the rules up a little yeah, bit. Change, things, yeah, things yeah, change. Say, New rules in the clubhouse. You know, say the band, the band words, but it's the gray stuff again. Yeah. You know, it's... Yeah. it's it's, yeah. it's what, the, and also that was Ryan's whole thing, the democratization. Everyone can be a Jedi. Right. Everyone can mm -hmm. use the Force. So well, I think I, we'll I, see something new and more loose. Oh yeah, I'd like to see, but as long as they, they got to keep the myth out, I want to see a bunch of people with sabers. Yeah. One way or another. And, and the same mm -hmm. thing with, with, like, I know you're on the other side of this now, but I want to see those Knights of Ren come back, and I want to see, and I want to see the Knights of Ren have, Sabers. I want to I, give me give me a, a, a group saber fight in, in nine. Take us home. Um, <laughs> although I think Benioff and Weiss will probably do that as well. What's next? Uh, speaking of sabers, you like your lightsabers? I like my lightsabers. Let's talk about lightsabers. Hey. Ben Vernick on Twitter says, excited to see Solo. Do you think this could be the first Star Wars movie that doesn't have a <gasps> lightsaber in the movie at all? I think that would be disappointing. However, it's not the case. Who do you think that might be? Anyone we know. So Rogue One had a similar question going into it, and we definitely got a lightsaber. It might, if, if there is a lightsaber, it'll be the same way that we got it yep. in Rogue One, and that's Vader. Um, the only way Vader pops into this movie is, once again, very similar like a battlefront scene. Yeah. Is that if, if Han, in the beginning of the movie, is is on, is on mm, yeah. you know is in the Empire, and he's on a battle, mm. and something or something's happening, and to his eye, he just kind of looks off in the distance, and he sees the red saber, and something's getting cut down. That's all I would need. Yeah. I wouldn't even. I don't even want him in it. I don't, to be completely honest, I don't really need a lightsaber in this movie. I just don't need it. Yeah, I don't. It's like it's not a movie about Jedi. Yeah, it's not not something that I'm. Uh, yeah, I do, I think that the more I I was thinking about this, and I think it's quite likely that you might see like 
the, the like handle of a lightsaber somewhere mm. in it, and it will be like an Easter egg for fans yeah. to catch. So it's not the first movie that doesn't it's have a lightsaber. Find like an old Jedi lightsaber or something. Yeah, yeah. like oh, it's in a junk shop right. or something. Mm. You know, I, I I doubt that there'll be lightsaber action. Yeah, yeah, no, I don't think there should be. Do you? I, it's definitely a weird idea to say it's a Star Wars movie that mm -hmm. has a lightsaber. And look, you're wearing this great shirt, and there's yeah. a, the ignite, Luke has ignited the green, and that's that's important. So lightsabers are part of Star Wars, part of pop pop culture. But I think. I'm interested in the idea of seeing what it is like completely sans, mm -hmm. I said force, but sans Jedi and lightsabers and those yeah. kind of things because the galaxy is large and especially during this time period, this wasn't something that, you know, people, right. you know, were talking about. Right. So, all right, so we got, um, what's, all right, what's next? Uh, coming up uh, here, we got uh, this question. Uh, let me scroll on down here because it's got a picture of Nine Numb in it. <laughs> Phil Morado right. says, all Star Wars movies we've seen so far are set in the past, a long time ago. Do you guys ever wonder what's happening in the Star Wars universe right now in the present? Who do you think ultimately won the Star Wars? Huh. The Republic? Oh. The Imperials? You love and then, it? Uh, it's got it's a big question. You don't, you don't see yeah. it up on the screen there, but it's got a picture of Nine Numb going, ah, dear, 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 dear. And I like that. So, Star Wars now? I, I don't know because I, what what is now? Yeah, you know, I, 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 no, yeah. that's that's a huge question. I'm yeah. like, we could have a whole series just about that. I I worry that when you get to Star Wars now, it starts yeah. also getting towards the ideas of like Star Wars Earth and all that yeah, stuff yeah. that I never want to see. I never, yeah, I never want to see it. But it's uh, ET ET uh, walking around and uh, you know uh, seeing yeah. Yoda was good enough for me. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Uh, I it's I don't I don't need that either. I mean, a long time ago, Galaxy Far Far Away, it takes place because at the time yeah. it's like billions of years ago. You know, like like yeah. uh, I think if they went to Earth, it would just be either dinosaurs or or yeah. nothing. Yeah. Um, like I, season four, of Battlestar Galactica. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's like I I I don't even, I don't need to know what's going on. Like to me, the now is when they tell me it's it for now. Yeah. Now, right now is episode nine. Yeah, that's yeah. now. Yeah. yeah, my the only timeline stuff I'm interested in is seeing where uh, Hidalgo and everyone goes between the end of uh, Rebels and the right. beginning, like the stuff that we don't know between the 30 years that happened. Like that to me is the timeline I'm, I'm interested in. And I also think, like you said, it's so fluid, the mm. idea of like a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. We don't know when they're talking about. For all we know, it is concurrent to what right. we're doing. It's, you know. All right, what's next? All right, let us go lettuce. to I lettuce. Some. Lettuce. I'm kind of hungry. I'm yeah, kind of hungry. Too, I like this. We've been talking about exploring uh, different kind of movies and styles here. Jeremy Foley asked a question that's on a lot of people's mind. So, do you think we'll ever get to explore more of the unknown regions and what the <gasps> Chiss Ascendancy and Eli Vanto are actually doing out there? Maybe Ray Sloan, a lot of other characters. What I think, think when it comes to the Chiss, um, I don't necessarily know about Eli because mm -hmm. I don't know if we'll ever see him again. Because right. I think that even with this Thrawn book, it takes place before mm -hmm. the event. So I, I, I don't think so. I mean, I never say never because right. maybe Zahn explores that down the line in a new book. Mm -hmm. I, I would say the, the probably lower odds, but I think the, the regions, yeah, yeah. we're, we're going to explore that in some way or another. They've been setting it up so much all over the place. And mm -hmm. whether it's Filoni's new series or something else, I think yeah. so. I think right. it's definitely, I think that's the next step because if solo does really well i think they might still carry on the so the star wars stories and that's how you continue looking at the stuff we know but i think for the future stuff whether it's benioff and weiss and and they're looking at what that meant before the republic whether it's uh the ryan's new trilogy i think that's the next place because yeah. we know the galaxy i mm -hmm. hope so yeah mm -hmm. all right Ken, what's next uh, let us go to... Let us again. Huh? I, I'm so hungry. <laughs> just really need a so salad. <laughs> hungry. Good turkey sandwich somewhere. <laughs> mm. <laughs> All right. This is a deep one. I think you, uh, you want to close or you want one more? What do you want? Uh, let's do... We'll do two more. Two more. All right. Then let's do this one. Jerry Jolly. Jolly Jerry Jolly. Jerry. Jolly Jerry. Over under 30% that the other <laughs> Wookiee and Solo Star Wars story trailer will oh. be revealed to be Mala, we talked about earlier. So, will that make Life Day canon in the Star Wars universe? Let's talk about this because this is Life Day up. canon already? I, I, I was just thinking that it might have already. I thought it was a Wendings book, wasn't yeah, it? He, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure it is. I think they've done a good job of uh, bringing that. I also think, like, the like so much of that stuff from the, um, the canon, the stuff that's been brought back in canon from the holiday special. 
life day isn't the issue. Like it makes mm -hmm. sense that there yeah, would be yeah, some yeah. religious. It was kind the execution of, of it that. It was the execution. Yeah. It was the <laughs> fact there was this weird TV special that yeah. they didn't really think through very it well. Was then, I mean, no, like, no, uh, no verbal language no, was, that anyone was, can understand. It was, it was atrocious. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, it, well, Lucas hated it. Yeah, like George said, we we kind of gave the rights to some people because variety shows were yeah. big at the time, yeah. and we didn't even really. And he yeah. wants to burn every copy. But there's some interesting things. And Achmena, B. Arthur's character, has mm -hmm. been mentioned. She had a. Yeah, she's canon she's now. She's canon, and and from a certain point of view. Um, Mala, Lumpawaru, and all that kind of stuff. What uh, do you think? Over thirty we'll percent. Is. Mala, that it's going to be real. Oh, I Mala? think it's old. Oh. I think Actually, it's old. I, I think. I think yeah. there's. I think the fact that when I realized that Lumpawaru was mm. canon, it has to be Mala. There's, yeah. Why? Why would why you? Would you yeah. Why would you not? And for fans, like I, I try and watch the holiday special every year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I, I have a copy. It's, yeah, it's, me too. Yeah, and it's it's, an it's so bad, and I love Star Wars stuff, but it's so bad. But that still this and this I guess is the power of Star Wars and stuff. When I saw him like kissing goodbye, to, I thought it was Marla and yeah. that meant something think, and kind of Yeah, I think I think it's a good reveal. I mean I what's what's the harm of making it Marla? I mean if you're yeah, ready, if you're setting it if the, the not harm, but the, the question would be like that eh, we need to make Chewie have a family. Well we already know that he does. Yeah. And yeah. we already know that even in this trailer there's obviously some kind of emotional relationship. So yeah. Yeah, make make it mom. Yeah, absolutely. All right, last one. All right, let's get deep. This is from E. W. Eric D. Weaver. In the Last Jedi, Paige, Holdo, and Luke all make huge sacrifices to save others, but Rose stops Finn from a similar act. What's the moral here? Lucas wrote stories with ethical clarity, but new Star Wars is ambiguous. Has it matured or just become muddled? I'm going to throw to you first on this. Uh, one. Here's mm. the difference. I'm no expert on this here. Paige was doing her duty sacrifice saved her life uh, or saved others uh, in the line of duty and that had to be done holdo did something that she had to do luke did something that he had to do in that particular moment does finn go into that death star tech and save the day i don't think he does his ship whoosh, vanishes mm -hmm. he's dead before he even gets in there i think rose is smart enough to probably realize that did she also just want to save him because she likes the dude that's fair. Yeah. That's also <laughs> part of this. And that's part of her lesson. We gotta save things we love too. Uh, you could destroy yourself in the act of doing good. Right. Even on Twitter, getting riled up in a fight. That's part of what the lesson is. Part of, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you could lose yourself in that. And, and there are, you know, uh, useless sacrifices. And I think in this particular moment, that's the difference for me. Finn would not have saved the day. Luke did something that he had to do and also had to do for the galaxy. Holdo, that's why also this Holdo maneuver criticism, it wasn't a tactic. It mm. was her going, what do I do? What do I do? Poe already put these coordinates in. Ha, I got it. This is something we're not right. supposed to do. Uh, and then Paige, again, in the line of duty, which is part of the sacrifice of war, uh, that's that's the difference to me. Think, yeah, I think I think you're right about all of that. I totally agree. I also think on a more like a bigger picture level, it's the lesson of the film. You mm -hmm. know, it's mm -hmm. it's it's she's doing what Poe wasn't able to do because Poe has that learning moment. Finn, stop, yeah. stop, right. and he tries to stop him, but he wants to go back. He wants to save everyone else. So Rose does it for him. Rose stops Finn from making what could have been. To be honest, as well, even if. Finn did blow up the Death Star cannon. Does that stop every? Right. Does it stop the Atats? Does it stop you know whatever else? It's it's Finn is learning the wrong lessons. He wants to dedicate himself to being a rebel and being in the rebellion. But would he be more used standing next to Ray and Poe than just right. dying when there's twelve people left in the resistance? Yeah, I think it's more of a sacrifice. I mean, more yeah. of a circumstance thing. So yeah. I happen to you guys think you guys. Kind of said it all. Even <laughs> in, in the original Zahn Thrawn novels, Thrawn himself believes in live to fight another day. Yeah. He, right. he preaches that to, to Peleona uh, often. Uh, so I think there's something in that too. Yeah. But it's a great question, Eric, and Ed, we love those kind of deep yeah. thought starter questions. So please all right. keep it coming. That's everything. Guys, thank you so much. Once again, I'd like to thank Brian Ward for all our brand new graphics. Hope you guys like them. Make sure that you submit your uh, your comments. What should we name the news droid? Don't forget about doing that. Subscribe to us on iTunes. Leave us a comment. Rate. If you, if you have Android, you can go to the Podcast One app and get us trending over on that site. All you got to do is just subscribe over there. Get the feed. Lots to do these days and hit that little bell for the notification so you can get all of the episodes of Clatter Jedi Council on YouTube if that is indeed how you digest them. I'd like to thank the council today. Ms. Rosie Knight, where can they find you? Hey, uh, I'm Rosie Marks on Twitter and I write at Nerdist and I got two Star Wars columns at Slashfilm. 
Fantastic. Mr. Ken Napsock, where hey. the hell they can find you? Yeah, you can find me at Ken Napsock, and that includes Twitch. Having a lot of fun over there. Don't forget my podcast, The Napsock Files, out there as well. And lastly, before we go, obviously you can find me at Christian Harloff, but you can find the free-for-all. It goes down tomorrow, 2 p.m. PST. I know there are a lot of watch-alongs all across not only the, the states. I know they're doing one in the U.K., which is uh, amazing. Go and check out, find out if you want to join, find out where other fans are having these watch-alongs for the free-for-all. Go to the Movie Trivia Schmodown Facebook page and just ask, where are you guys doing your watch-alongs? And uh, find some other fans. We're going to put together a whole mixture, like a little montage, and show all you guys out there. 48 competitors all vying for a shot at a championship. Go and check that out. But thank you very much for the council. I'm Christian Harloff, and may the force be with you. Always. Hey, everybody. Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode. You want to watch more? Then click up here. Or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. If you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.